What's up guys, Brandon here, the face behind Braille Images. I'm usually behind the camera, but I figured today I'd get in front of the camera to let you guys see who I am, where I came from, what got me started in this, and what got me actually into carrying a camera around everywhere I go. So let's get into the story. Back in high school in 1993, my senior year, uh, December, I think it was, I bought a Honda CRX, immediately fell in love with the platform, uh, started fo following magazines, picking stuff up at stores to see what other guys in the country were doing, decided to tear into it, started getting into car shows after I graduated in 94, started going to as many car shows as I could, once again fell in love with it even more. Played with that car for a little bit, blew it apart. I uh, wound up getting it shot for Mini Truck and Magazine that was in the May uh, 99. Yeah, to make sure. May 99 issue. It's hanging on the wall here. Uh, then the very next year, we added Air Ride. We added uh, new wheels, upgraded it even more. Uh, it was in Lowrider, April 2000. Soon as those first two features got shot, wind up in a couple Reader's Rides articles, immediately was hooked in the whole magazine thing. Started knowing some of the photographers and some of the editors, uh, saw how things were shot, being I was having my vehicle shot, so I kind of saw how the process worked. Got into doing some online stuff, a couple websites, started doing stuff for uh, Street Source. Y'all may remember streetsourcemag.com, SSM, everybody had the chat room and all that. I went by Quit Staring back then, which was the, the tag on my CRX. Got into shooting for them. Uh, 2001, I wanted to venture out even more. I reached out to, to Mike Self and Brian McCormick at Street Trucks and said, hey, what's it take to, to shoot for your magazine? I didn't have access to a truck readily. Uh, so I shot my car and sent them the photos to see if it was good enough wound up being good enough so they sent me on a couple shows uh to go shoot for them doing some some features back then the all the lead shots had to be on slide film you know digital wasn't a thing back then really it was just then starting to come in like keep in mind this is 2001 so it's not really it really wasn't as big as it is now you know the the, the first point shoot camera i started shooting with i want to say was a 2.1 megapixel, like just crazy in today's terms. Uh, but it worked for online stuff. It worked for the uh, for the feature stuff. Well, take that back. I stepped up to a uh, eight megapixel when I started doing the, the the print magazine stuff. Started shooting for street trucks. The first show I covered for street trucks, I wanted to get introduced to one of the editors of trucking. Uh, he needed somebody else in my area as a freelancer. Started shooting for them. The the first show I covered for for trucking, I wound up uh, meeting up with uh, Johnny O, John O'Neill. Uh, that used to be over Sport Truck. Started shooting for him. Kind of snowballed there. That gave me a few other magazines to shoot for right off the bat. Well, moving forward from there, started shooting for mini trucking, a hot bike, Camaro performers, uh, Dub rods there's probably been over 30 30 magazines that i've shot for titles that i've shot for over the years but started getting really deep into it uh i had another another vehicle from 2002 to 2004 uh, mazda protege 5 uh, it was in a couple magazines uh, some vendors used it at their their booths at Honda important nights like bf goodrich tires used it at a few events nopi events and stuff had that until 2004, decided to sell it in 2004 to focus on my photography. It's kind of hard to be at a show taking pictures in the mornings at sunrise uh, and trying to get the vehicle cleaned up for shows, try to make all that happen. So sold it, focused on my, my magazine career. Uh, Full-time, Monday through Friday, I was at Pepsi at the time. I was there for 22 years. Uh, 50, 60, 70 hours a week sometimes, as much as I could. If I wasn't at work at Pepsi, I took off to do car shows. I'd leave on Friday, come back Sunday. Uh, really pushed push myself to, 
to create the content I did. Got better every time I shot. Of course, I'd get home and be like, all oh, these pictures suck, they're not good. But it let me push my, my brand, it let me push my skill level, uh, what I could and couldn't do. I got more comfortable with it. Uh, pushed that pretty hard for the next 10 years. So from 2004 to 2014, I, I still continued to, to shoot as much as I could. And of course, through the 2007, 2008, a lot of the magazines started falling off. Pay drastically dropped. Even though it didn't pay what it used to, I still knew that I enjoyed what I was doing. I enjoyed bringing you guys content. So went back through, uh, kept finding new magazines to shoot for to, to make up for that difference in money. Um, 2013, uh, me and my girlfriend at the time went to SEMA, uh, found out that you know the, the lifted market was huge on the West Coast, way bigger than the East Coast. Figured I could, I could build something. I could shoot a few tech articles on it, tie in with a few manufacturers that I've, I dealt with, a couple shops I dealt with. Let's see what I could do with this. As a joke, it started, said, hey, let's build a, a SEMA vehicle. It happened, just snowballed, happened. Uh, that joke become reality. Uh, I wound up building a 2014 Silverado that went to SEMA 2014. It was in the TIS wheels booth. Uh, it was my first first time showing at SEMA. I'd been to SEMA a couple times before, a few times before, but it was my first time having a vehicle there. I had it there. Uh, actually sold it Friday at SEMA. Sold it, dropped it off to the guy's house on the way home. Didn't plan to sell it. Plan to enjoy it. It was uh, 15 inches of lift on 40s, had some interior work, some powder cutter underneath. So that vehicle sold, built a 2015 Tundra for the 2015 SEMA show. It wound up going for undercover bed covers. It was in the South Hall lobby. Kind of created a name for myself when it come to SEMA builds. Was still shooting as much as I could for the magazines. Uh, started dabbling in video a little bit. Uh, of course, the technology, the video started getting easier, photography, the megapixels and stuff started getting better. You know, technology changes every year. I'd change gear out every so often, push the envelope of what I would, would shoot with, which in turn pushed the envelope of what I could provide you guys. Had that vehicle at uh, 2015 at SEMA. Uh, wanted to keep it for a little bit, so built my still girlfriend at the time, a 2016 Subaru WRX, uh, took it to SEMA 16. Still, once again, solidified my my role in the, the SEMA world. That's three years in a row, you know, still doing the magazine stuff. Uh, at this point, I'd created a brand for myself. I think I started Burrell Images in, I wanna say I, I created a business license in 2004. Yeah, 2004. And, uh, you know, had the brand, had the website, didn't really mess with the website that much. You know, then social media started started coming around. So, you know, created the Braille Images Instagram and then YouTube, didn't really fool with YouTube that much. You know, it was still, still kind of hard to upload. There wasn't the apps and stuff like they are now that you could just upload straight from your phone and be good to go. So back to the, the 2016, like I said, had the, the Subaru there. Uh, then, 2017, I helped a buddy build his truck. We'd already done a lot of tech articles on it. I was like, why don't we just finish it? Got it done for SEMA. Uh, took it to SEMA for uh, TIS wheels. All the, the Subaru was there for Drop Stars uh, wheels the year before. But the the Tundra, my buddy's Tundra, went back in 17, like I said, for TIS wheels. Well, we also took the Subaru back for road wire letter. Uh, it was a, a feature vehicle for them. So I had two vehicles there that year. 2018, I said, you know, I want to take a break from building. You know, that was 14, 15, 16, 17. That's four years of thrashing, trying to make stuff happen while I'm still working 50 to 70 hours a week, while I'm still doing the photography stuff. So took a break from that. Still went to see them. still, you know, made the connections and stuff I needed to do. Went back in 19 with Cramberry, which was my 2019 Ram. Uh, full air ride, 26s, interior, engine bay was done. Uh, got it there in 19. Uh, 
took it back in 21, uh, of course, 2020. They didn't have SEMA due to the, the pandemic. Took Cranberry back in 21, sold it shortly thereafter. Uh, didn't know what I was going to build. Still focusing on the on the photography deal. Uh, into 21, I left my, my job at Pepsi after 22 years. Realized there was nowhere else for me to go with that company uh, other than, than being uh, basically slave labor for the next 10 years. And after 22 years in, I knew that wasn't for me. Uh, my side gig of the photography had, had done me pretty good over the years. So decided it was time to dive into that. Dove into that full force. Started doing automotive detailing. Uh, just kept me busy. Uh, 2022 come around. Like I said, we didn't didn't build anything that year for SEMA. Went to went to SEMA that year. Figured out that I wanted to do another build for 23. Uh, decided to do a 23 Sierra. This time I want to do a static drop, big wheels, crazy interior, something simple, clean. That got planned, and then March of actually February of 23, I got the phone call from Street Trucks asking if I would take over as the editor position. Uh, that was the first magazine I'd ever shot for. I knew immediately that that I would take it. Stepped into that role, a little bit of learning curve on the back side of the magazine. Of course, I'd shot for magazines for, you know, at that point, 20, 22 years. Uh, so I kind of knew how the magazine aspect worked. I knew how the, the layout aspect, I knew timelines, I knew what was needed, what wasn't needed. Went back in. Uh, like I said, learn the, the backside of it, production dates, uh, the, the whole layout process. Uh, still fell in love with it. Knew that was what I wanted to do. Pushed that through all of 23. Got the Sierra to, to SEMA 23. While at SEMA 23, I've already lined up the SEMA 24 uh, booth vehicle. This one's going back for uh, TIS wheels. Uh, I guess you can see a pattern. I've kind of been back and forth with them a lot over the years. Those guys... Excellent group of guys, uh, Ramos and Miles. They're they're almost like family at this point. Uh, I've worked so much with them, so that's going back for twenty four. Uh, still pushing the the street trucks deal. Of course, the next issue about to come out. Uh, but in the last couple of months, now I run Bronco Magazine and Yoda Magazine. So all three of these, they're all through the same publishing company. Uh, they're all three, you know, engaged media. Uh, editor at large for all three of those, always looking for features, shows, uh, tech, that kind of stuff, shooting a lot of stuff myself. But if you guys want to know more about the backstory on how this started or how I became uh, linked to the industry like I am, uh, reach out. You guys that are starting out, uh, it don't happen overnight. Now there's a lot of new technology. You, you know, the kids can go out and buy you know, four megapixel cameras like what I'm using now, and they can buy the, you know, the all the the gimbals and the, the DSLR stuff and the editing software is just amazing now where it wasn't in 01 when I started. So if you're trying to get into it, of course, there's not as many magazines as there, as there used to be. You know, back in the day, I could go off on a, you know, weekend and shoot for six different magazines that weekend, shoot 10 or 12 different features. They all, they all went to different magazines. Uh, now there's just not so much print, but the online side of it's growing. It's huge. So for those of you getting into it, don't stop. Just find a, a niche that you like and, and follow that. Don't be scared to, to veer off and, and try something new. You can always you know reach out to people like myself that, that run these magazines. Always looking for new talent. You know, we see a lot of up and comers that have stepped up the game and what photos are now, what the you know whole photography and videography stuff is. I had people like Brian McCormick and uh, Mike Alexander and Johnny O that would you know took me under their wings and let me let me become what I am now. So now it's my turn to bring some of these younger guys in. So if you think you have what it takes reach out to me, shoot me a message, hit me up, go to BurrellImages.com, check out at Burrell Images on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok and, you know, shoot me a message. Let me see what you got. Do you have a vehicle that you, you want to have shot or that you want to shoot? Let me know. Till then, we'll, uh, we'll catch back up on the next video, guys.